All right. We are live on Facebook. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. I'm here in person with Mr. Richard Vartan Kazanjan, a good friend, and our producer. How are you, man? I'm good. We're both good vaccinated. We're both vaccinated, by That's the way. That's why we don't yeah, have yeah, that we're mask. Right now. mask. Right. Uh, this is the first time we've seen each other in person for a while. Been, well, we, we saw we, each other at April 24th. Yeah, but he, but then it was uh, yeah. about a year and a half at least. It's been a while since yeah. I've been up here. It's been, I think, for a couple sure. of years. A couple yeah. years. But uh, thank you everybody for tuning in and watching us, uh, watching us tonight, joining the show. We have a very special guest I'm going to introduce in just a moment. Uh, Greg is off tonight. Yep. He is uh, handling some family business and uh, handling stuff for cutting wine. Yep. So we're excited for him. Um, yep. But there's a lot to cover tonight. Um, a lot of you know uh amazing interesting disturbing news uh i don't even know how to put it i think this has just been the extension of months and months of the the general uh armenian neuroses that we've been on you know there's been so much that that's happened um yeah, yeah and, so yeah there hasn't been a lot of good news uh but tonight we are spotlighting and highlighting a very very important initiative that the hbu has put together right. i'd like to Welcome and introduce uh, Ms. Arda Haratunian. Excuse me, Arda. Arda Haratunian. She is a HBU Central Board member. Thank you so much for joining us late tonight. You're in New York, correct, Arda? So, it, so it's now officially Friday. It is officially oh. Friday morning. Uh, thank you so much for staying up for us to join. I'm glad I could do it. To talk about this important initiative. Um, we're going to show the trailer in just a moment, but, you know, Arda, it's been, I have been, very, very impressed and humbled and really blown away by the work that HBU has done during and after and since the war, uh, from humanitarian aid to making sure our story is told, um, and even the, uh, the, the uh, scholarships and things that are being presented as well for people uh, to, to research on, Ar uh, on Artsakh. So, we're really glad to have you. Thank you so much for joining the, the, the show tonight. Glad to be here. Yeah. Shall we, uh, I guess, uh, should we, shall we start with the trailer? Uh, do, you want, do you want to start with news or do you want to go right? No, I think we can, we, we can yeah. head into the news when, I mean, you know, we want to be respectful of your time. I mean, yeah. we, we could, we could, we could spend just, even the two of us, uh, yeah. 45 minutes to an hour just on yeah. the news alone. Right. So we'll do that later. Um, but maybe before we get into the trailer can you tell us a little bit about you and tell us a little yes. bit about your work and um well, and you sure. know we're in orbit together so i will i will start by saying um first of all i'm glad to be here and i am proud to be part of agbu because you know this is not new agbus just celebrate our 116th anniversary Amazing. and i could probably spend the entire show talking about agbu right. but one of the most profound things people should know is when AGB was founded 116 years ago, our mission has not changed. How we do our mission obviously has evolved with the times. And that's one of these things that I have to say to be part of an organization that could be that, that true to its core. Um, so when it was founded, it was founded for very obvious humanitarian reasons. And the founders immediately thought about the need for social and economic development even during those crisis years, you know, around the genocide. Um, and here we are, you know, 116 years later and the core pillars of education, culture, humanitarian assistance and socioeconomic development are still there. Right. Um, what's, you know, obviously disturbing to all Armenians is history repeating itself. Um, but I always, I mean, you know, I know David pretty well, and I have to say, David, you're part of the AGBU family in a big way too. You're one of the driving forces behind our young professionals. And honestly, the young professionals are the future of our global Armenian nation. So, you know, you really deserve a hand for the work you do with the YPs. Um, so, so basically this video to me is a, um, not this video, the series, the Voices of Truth is really symbolic representative of what we do. Um, and what's remarkable, remarkable about this is if you put it in the context of the genocide, had there been technology to do this then, who knows how different history would have been record, how differently history would have been recorded. So these right. first person narratives are powerful 
they're far reaching and, and something critical I want everyone to know is one of the driving forces behind them was to reach not only our community, but to reach non-Armenians. And that's, you know, when you hear people telling their stories in, in such a compelling way, and you'll see it from the trailer now, um, it really moves you. And we hope that it moves people, not just Armenians, to have history not repeat itself and ultimately to document the truth real time from the people who were there, who in no way could be making this up. Right. So maybe with that, if you want to show the trailer. For sure. Yeah, perfect. For sure. We'll do that right now. There's something wrong with this world. Oh, streaming. Of course, we have a buffer. Yeah, that's the modern world. In Charis in the Matsarchka, yes, more as a gent on you. I have fast internet. I don't understand what's going on. I said, go on a do second for a merdiak near a hanovini. Arkes are talking about the chumber art and Kimia Gazinko and Darnet it for a little. If it's happening here, it's going to happen somewhere else in the next decade. I can't even talk about this. But it has been shot on the number of times. Yeah, it's amazing. I found that, you know, I, I'm a pretty emotional guy anyway, but I found, um, you know, the first shot of that older woman uh, speaking about it. I mean, I just immediately, that was my grandmother. You know, I, I grew up with my grandmother as a genocide survivor, uh, you know, crying every day. And and so, you know, I mean, you know, when 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 people think about the genocide or killings like this or, or whatever, you you know, they, they don't often see it the same way that people who, who have been around these people see it. You know what I mean? Uh, and, and, and so when, when, when we think of it in the abstract, it's like, well, I don't really understand it. I, you know, I didn't smell the, the sulfur. I didn't see the flashes. I didn't hear it. Um, but, but these people have. And I mean, I, can, see you it. Know, I haven't you met see any it. of them. You see it in their eyes, though. I mean, that was a minute long. There is nothing dishonest, disingenuous, not real about that. And, right. and I, I think that that really that minute speaks to how powerful this effort really is. Because just by watching those snippets, the photos, the stills from the oldest to the youngest, they lived it. I mean, they lived it less than six months ago. They lived it and they're telling their story real time so that those of us who thank God didn't, and who, you know, we're all very high said we feel the pain. We don't really know what it's like, but then you know by listening to those voices, it's the truth of what went on. And it did not discriminate. I mean, I, I've said this before, these videos show it doesn't discriminate on age, on gender, on socioeconomic status. I mean, you had in, in the videos that have been done so far, you have people who had very responsible, successful careers in, in Stepanakert or outside of Stepanakert. And then you had people who, you know, were from the villages. Um, and so it was very personal, very real. I mean, I, you know, one of the women said it, war is not abstract to so many people. The inhumane activities across the globe right now are abstract. To Armenians, it's personal. And I mean, Rich, to your point, like, you know, we grew up with grandparents. 
and mine didn't cry and talk about it every day. I mean, I had four survivors in my four grandparents and my grandmother, who I was very close to, who died when she was a hundred, did not want to talk about it. And wow. when she did, so, it, you know, and, and by the way, voices of truth, no one was forcing anyone to talk about it. But when people started wanting to talk about it, AGBU was there. So. Arda, you recently just spoke uh, to CivilNet about this. Uh, tell us, tell us about, about these stories, about these docu, about this docu-series, uh, an overview, tell us an overview of the series, what it is, why AGBU has taken this initiative on, uh, and then we can get more into where people can view it. Yeah. And okay, so yeah. first I have to say, I, I told you what an honor it is to be on the board of AGBU and to work with um, a, a lot, our, I mean, we have tens of thousands of volunteers across the globe. I have to say, we have an incredibly engaged, capable um, board. And one of our board members, um, Ani Manukian, she, you know, we were working on every December, AGBU does these um, programs for United Nations Prevention Day. I mean, the name is really long, but it's basically not supposed to be focused on Armenians. So AGBU has taken the initiative and really drives these events to focus on non-Armenians. And, and that gave Ani an idea as we were trying to get videos from Shoah about genocide, Armenian, non-Armenian, about Holocaust, about what was going on in Ethiopia. And, Rwanda, um, and the idea that we don't have much from the Armenians. So here we were preparing for December 9th, 2020, while the war was still going on. And we have terrific people who work for AGBU in Armenia and their phones, their cameras, it became their, their weapon. It became their way of documenting it real time. So it started with a simple idea motivated by something related, but not directly related. Our team, you know, jumped to it, not easily because remember in Armenia, this was again, very raw, not abstract real time. But if you were willing to take your camera and they were willing, they were willing to talk, we at AGBU, we're going to document it. And at the same time, another one of our board members, um, Nadia Gutsunyan from France, she put together this Yeria, this group yeah. of young, right, eyewitnesses. Yeah, um, and that was, had a profound impact because you had journalists who traveled, you had lay people who traveled, you had legislators from across the EU traveled. And so, take that and these eyewitnesses, eyewitness accounts, again, got documented. And so all of these pieces came together. So this is when you know you have a really impactful organization because even in the darkest moments you say, let me create something that has the potential to be light for other people. Yeah. Um, and I'm saying other people, including non-Armenians. Right. So that that was the genesis of this. And, and, you know, obviously from the moment the war started, AGBU's humanitarian hand was out there. Um, we had people at the Vahe Karapetyan Center um, who wanted to talk. So not a single one of the people in these videos were forced or, you know, or coerced or, you know, said, please tell. They wanted to talk and you see, you know, and they're not acting, you know, you can tell when people are being overly dramatic Fabricating or just, yeah, talking from the heart. So Absolutely. that was, that was it. That's amazing. And so I, you know, for those, and so first of all, I'm glad that you brought up non-Armenians because we like to think that we are catering to not just the, you know, highest Nazis or the, you know, you know, any, any of the Armenians from around, around the world. We're also trying, we're, we're Californians too, and we're Americans and we, we, you know, because of the genocide, live abroad, right? Or mm -hmm. we're born and raised abroad. So, so you know, I mean, I, I grew up, I was born and raised in Sacramento, California, but my mother was from Brooklyn and my father was from Aleppo. So, you know, we try and broadcast to uh, our uh, Americans as well and try and rope them in. So mm -hmm. on that note, for those, of, for those of our American audience who don't know what the AGBU is, um, it's the Armenian General Benevolent Union. One of the things I, I really appreciate about, not even just the organization, even in the name, um, that you know, the idea of benevolence in a, gen in a general way and that you're just focused on helping uh, 
is really profound. And I think that, and it also speaks to the idea that there's, it's nonpartisan, which mm -hmm. I like. Definitely nonpartisan, definitely nonpolitical. Um, I, I will say, you know, if, so you talked about doing good and helping and, and this is not charity. We don't do this to be charitable, right? I mean, of course we're charitable. Of course our hearts are full of grace and, and um, we wanna help people. But it's, you know, it's about our people, it's about our nation, it's about our church, it's about all of the components that make up the, the global Armenian, we call it the global Armenian. Um, we don't judge, you know, and it's interesting, we're working on a program right now, David, you might know about, but on identity and inclusion and just really, you know, we are richer as a people when non-Armenians come into our fold, when they're fascinated by what we do, how we do it, how did we survive, how resilient are we? And that's a word I'm trying not to use in every other sentence, yeah. but you know, it's not easy being resilient, but it is a real gift to be as resilient as we are. And when things don't go well, we don't give up. And I, you know, I have this theory on, you know, this war was planned for years. I'm not saying this geopolitically, I'm not trying to profess great political knowledge, right? But when the people who tried to wipe us out a hundred years ago, 120, 110, 106 years ago, when they saw 2015, the centennial of the genocide, um, when they saw, you know, the Smithsonian featuring Armenia on, on, on the mall, when they saw Francophony taking place, 80 French speaking countries gathering in Armenia, WCIT, the World Congress on Information Technology, all these things said, we have not only survived, we have moved beyond it. Now the recognition from Joe Biden was hugely significant. I would never say it was anything but, but we were doing okay without presidents doing the right thing. Right, right, right. That was a big step for us. And it did give a boost and a lot of, you know, non-Armenians suddenly paid attention. But Armenians have so much to be proud of. And, you know, AGBU has kind of built on that year over year. And throughout our history at critical points for our nation, whether our nation was under Soviet rule, independent democracy, you know, AGBU has had to play a role in helping continue to kind of keep our, our people grounded and, and together and everything else. So it is benevolence, it is helping, it is, you know, obviously doing some charity, but I, I will um, sort of transition to, you know, you referenced it in the opening, David, the Artsakh, you know, the fellowships, the scholarships, yeah. and, and I don't want to misspeak of what they're called, but, but we had an overwhelming, yeah. you know, response right. to that. And I think um, that speaks to the fact that there's a lot of interesting stuff to be studied in Artsakh and scholars, students, they want to study it. So that's another way. I mean, scholarships broadly, but specific to Artsakh, um, yeah, that was a big one, so. It's, are people grounded and together? Yeah, it's been amazing. It's been amazing to see. Arda, did we lose audio? No, I don't think we did. Did you lose me? No, no, there you no, go. no. Uh, no it's, it's been so amazing to see all of the facets that HBO has taken on surrounding the situation in Artsakh and how we move forward with this. Um, just bringing back to Voices of Truth, tell us more about how many episodes there are. And then what, let's touch a little bit on the content of it without giving it away. But like, who, how were the people chosen? I know they weren't, no one was forced yeah, to. Yeah, it, it was very, that was very organic. Oh, it awesome. was, if somebody started to talk, someone happened to be around one of our staff members who had their camera, who felt, you know, because we were both helping people in Yerevan and some of the displaced families were in other villages and places. So right. that was very organic. Right now there's 16 stories. I was asked, are there going to be more? I think the platform and the brand is now there. Yeah. And we hope the stories are not this tragic, or we hope that obviously a little bit of time and we get some healing and, but the, the platform is there. So uh, right now there's 16. Um, they range from, you saw the elderly woman, the elderly gentleman, um, his grandchildren by his side telling the story. The woman who was in the trailer, um, you know, professional woman, I think she worked for the Ministry of Education in Artsakh, she's from Stepanakert. Then there's the, um, the young gentleman uh, is a doctor 
who was born in Armenia, um, lived in the US, went back as a physician to help during the war. And what he saw, I actually saw his raw footage before it was edited for Voices of Truth. You couldn't even bear to listen to what he was conveying of what he saw among the young men, mostly. I don't, I don't remember him speaking of any of women soldiers, but what he witnessed. And he said, it's, you know, we're not even going to know the toll of this right. for years because of the psychological toll, what the soldiers saw, how that toll is going to play out over time. And uh, he was the gentleman with the longer hair. So I'm basically yes. saying you, you're running the gamut of who, there's another doctor who is from Artsakh. He's a cardiologist, I think. And I believe he treated some of the victims of the um, 1994 war. Oh. And now here it was happening again. Again, yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, so I mean, it really runs, um, it's a range of ages and people and backgrounds, but right now there's 16, you know, episodes. Wow, wow that's amazing. That, that is amazing. That is amazing. Arno, you make it sound as if, when I saw it, it looked to me like you had a professional film crew put this together, producer, director, editor. I mean, it's so professionally done, but it, it sounds like it was even more, it was way more organic than that. It was yeah. way more So that's camera. a testament to our, our team in Armenia. Um, yeah. I won't name names, but we have a few people on that team who just did this as a labor of love. And, wow. you know, um, and, and the editing of it, if there was editing done, um, took time. Mm -hmm. But Ooh, that yeah. was, you know, you know about it me. was almost like it also gave a chance. I think if Armenians saw this November 10th, December 15th, January, you know, it would have had a different kind of a feeling after this, during the war and after the war, Armenians were so raw. Uh -huh. yeah, Some, sure. many are still. And so something like this, it's almost compounded. And we do, we have to give ourselves a little bit of a chance to kind of process what we're hearing, what we're seeing. But the important thing is that it was done real time. You know, it was done immediately. So um, everything they're talking about is, is powerful. Well, I have to say, I think that is huge because, you know, I, I can't speak for anybody else, but I know for me growing up, the idea that, you know, you know, I would be listening to my grandmother and, and trying to communicate because, you know, she spoke. Uh, Armenian and Turkish and and uh, Farsi and 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 I didn't you know but um, but but I guess my 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 point I'm driving at is that you know I think it's in our DNA to want to record these things and want to capture as much history as possible not only because we've lost so much but because inherently we understand that you know if something is going to happen, we need to be able to broadcast it. We need to be able to showcase it. We need to be able to expose it. We need to be able to record it so that we can say, see, this actually did happen. Because I think many of us have been living under this sort of uh, veil of, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's like we've been gaslit on an, on an international level. At least that's my, my perception. And, and so having these eyewitness accounts is so profound because it, it, it shows people that yes, this actually happened. These people actually responded to this. That we are, and it's not just oh well, war happens. It's no, we are, we are, we are a survival case here. You know what I mean? We are, we are living proof of the, in, you know, the human spirit. Right. Am I making, you know, am I making any sense at all? Yeah, oh no, yeah, definitely. I, I would say, how do you look at these people and still say a war started? A war happened to these people. These people did not want a war. They weren't ready right. for a war. They weren't planning for the war, as some people reported, you know, journalists reported. Right. It's not like, oh, a war broke out. No, the morning of September 27th at one woman said it's 7.23 a.m., you know, um, all of a sudden I heard these noises, whatever, whatever. It wasn't like they were saying well maybe there's going to be a war maybe we're going to instigate a war right. so yeah this is you're right it has to be done real time so that when you know even now not to jump to current events but you know i think it was france us and russia all said that azerbaijan was you know moving into sunik incursion whatever word you want to use 
But those, you know, documenting that they said this aggression was happening, it didn't just break out. It wasn't like Armenia did something. Um, facts matter. That huh. I, I want to. I mean, they they do. Right. There, there's no there's no alternate right. set of facts, right? Are and how do you prove what happened if you weren't there? Well. You document, you videotape, you take statements, you say, yeah, but this, you know, you said this on September 27th, or you said this on September 28th. I think we were all caught off guard. And so even doing this now, it's good. But having cameras there with timestamps on them exactly at that moment would have been even better, right? But we didn't have that. So I think, unfortunately, we learn. So, right, yeah. but all of these interviews you're saying were, took place during or shortly after the war? Well, or, no, some of, I mean, yeah. starting from, it was probably, I, I don't want to misspeak. I mean, it was not immediately September 27th, sure. but it was once they were displaced, once the war was wholly underway. And then, you know, it took, it kept going after that. Yeah. You know, I mean, remember, I don't think anyone was in the position September 27th, October 1st, October 8th to say, hmm, let's document this right this second. But as people were being displaced, as they were telling their stories, as our AGVU team in Armenia said, let's document these stories, you know, yeah, yeah. Um, as our board members said, what can we do to yeah. not repeat? You know, I said this on CivilNet, like yes. we grew up you know, hearing about the genocide through yellowed newspaper articles. We saw copies of the New York Times from 1915, 1916, you know, um, there wasn't really video. And by the time we started capturing the people on video, I mean, I remember I was young, but it was in the 1980s. That's right. Um, We were starting to lose our survivors. So you yeah. don't want that to well first of all you don't want any genocide anywhere to ever happen again but you certainly don't want to lose the ability right. to get their eyewitness accounts for sure yeah that's what, why this is so powerful and you know Arda, i took your quote that you said actually on uh, on the civil net interview the truth is important and nothing is more powerful than first person narratives that was the quote that that you gave um in that, that interview and it's so it's so true and that's why i think this is so powerful um, Arthur, perhaps you could share, you mentioned New York Times, and we're getting towards uh, the latter part of the 30 minutes here uh, to get us started, and it's very late, we don't want to keep you uh, mm-hmm. too late uh, over there, too early in the morning, um, but the you mentioned New York Times and learning from the New York Times. We don't have that luxury anymore. Now we have to combat the New York Times with letters to the editor for their outrageous misprinting and biased reporting, right? How can this series be a part of this next stage of post-war analysis, right? That is so essential for our ac- for the accuracy of what happened. And how can we use it in uh, in the PR scope, which is your expertise, right? PR professional for so many for so many decades. What What are your thoughts on that? I mean, obviously, that's that's what the basis of this is, right? So, yeah. okay. Yeah, First of all, you each have platforms, right? You have networks, your non-Armenian networks, your professional networks. So you need to share them. And I said it to the civil net reporter as well. I mean, he's from the UK originally. And I think the more people we get it to, and they're so short and compelling that you can watch them. I mean, there's one that has multiple episodes, but otherwise they don't take that long, right? And you can watch six minutes, eight minutes, four minutes, whatever it is. So every single one of us needs to just share these and say, look, it's not happy watching, but it's certainly educational, it's certainly instructional, and it certainly has a meaning beyond just our world, right? Um, So that's one way. You know, I grew up knowing information is power. We all learn that, right? So the more information you have, the more power you have to control destiny, your destiny, you know, whatever the the issues you care about. So I think information comes in different forms. I would argue that, um, you know, one of the things I'm passionate about and I speak about is media literacy. We're kind of in the older age group, even though you guys are much younger than I am. Um, But I'm talking about third graders now, second graders, you know, fifth graders. They don't have media literacy yet. They're getting bombarded by information. They don't know what's 
accurate, what's not. So this is where we have to use kind of critical thinking and, you know, younger and younger kids are learning that. So this series, the voices of truth is valuable information. It's accurate and it's instructional, right? So getting it out there is important. The media serves a purpose. There's good, there's medium, there's ugly. I, you know, we'd have to deal with all of it. Uh One thing, whoever's listening, there are do's and don'ts in dealing with the media and cursing them out, threatening them um, is not helpful to us. And and we're not going to go off on that tangent now, Right. but I will tell you, I've shared the link of Voices of Truth with a number of journalists. Not all were warm and fuzzy and friendly during the war, but I just said, whenever you have a chance to watch it, because this stuff's not made up, okay? I'm not asking you to write anything. I'm not asking you to correct anything, but I'm giving you constructive feedback that perhaps you didn't have the full picture. And so this is just one of the many things we have. Um, You know, the AGB website, right from day one, um, we were doing these activates uh, to, people across the globe, what you can do, how you can be better informed. Immediately, we start compiling news articles from a host of outlets in multiple languages. Um, And so it's easy to find information, academic things, easy to find. So you go to the, you know, agbu.org and there is a wealth of information and it's all vetted and trustworthy. So, you know, and this is just one more link voices of truth yes that that's amazing um you know one thing i wanted to comment on before we you know you know begin to wind down uh is the is the idea that you know if we're going to deploy uh information to people i think it's important for us to realize that we're living in an age where where in not it's not just information it's attention is the new currency that's why facebook and all these other uh, companies have got algorithms that are, that are designed to hook you in with short videos and to understand us how we work so that they can present us in a content that they want us to consume. And so we just have to find ways as advocates and as activists to find better ways of deploying the content that is going to capture these people's attention so that they can create some change. Because I, I you know, I found that I could blast until I'm blue in the face and it doesn't get a whole lot of traction, whether it's because Facebook's algorithms weeded out or whether people tune out after a little while, I just have to change the way that I make my approaches. And I don't know what your position on that is. Or how well, you- I mean, it's, it's a commo- attention span is a commodity. That's right. um, I think, a, you know, we used to joke around about elevator pitches 15 right. years ago in my business. And now you have to have an elevator pitch for the Artsakh war. And when I would explain to a journalist, this history does not go back to 1994. It does not go back to 1921 when Stalin arbitrarily gave this land to Azerbaijan. This goes back a thousand plus years. And so that's, that took what, 20 seconds? So whenever somebody, whether it was the New York Times or another news outlet talked about these poor Azeris who are finally getting their land back after they lost it in 1994. I'm like, well, what came before 1994? What came before 1921? What, you know, and so that's all done in snippets of information. If you're lucky, you get someone who actually cares about the whole story. But the elevator pitch concept is true in advocacy as well. It's not just for selling your startup, right? right. right. So we all have to, look, I make this argument. I teach communications too. I not only work in it, but I tell my students in both the writing and the public speaking class, I'm like, these are the two most important classes you'll ever take in your life, which I'm sure many people would disagree, but Warren Buffett said it. Well, I'm sorry. What'd you say, Rich? Well, no, when when I was in high school, I took a public speaking course and it led me into a career of being a public speaker. Mm -hmm. So it, and when, and when that teacher said, this is going to be the most important class you ever take, I didn't believe it, but now I 100% believe it, 100%. Right. So no we as Armenians have to become better communicators to non-Armenians, which That's is why as angry as we get, like I said, posting nasty things or tweeting nasty comments is not constructive and it's not gonna move our needle. Right. Voices of Truth is obviously a much deeper product you know, and, and I'm not saying we can do that all the time either, but 
at each turn, there's something we can do. Um, and I'll go back to the AGB website, agb.org, right? I mean, you go there, if you spend half an hour, as many of my non-Armenian colleagues have done, you get a lot of information and you know that it's quality information, it's relevant, it's timely, it's useful. Um, are you taking us to the home screen? Yeah, we're sure, we're yeah. sure on the home screen. I mean, honestly, if, if everyone here, you know, anyone who's watching, listening, like just go to agbu.org, you will learn more about Armenians, history, the context, you know, our web talk series, AGBU web talks, there's one with Israel Charney, I think, um, on the landing page now. Yeah. Most of the web talks, they're not by Armenians, but they're, and they're of interest to non-Armenians. And they're, again, short, they're interesting. So, um, you could spend a few minutes on the AGB website. And this is the, I was saying the current events page um, yep. that was broken down by subject matter and in multiple languages, the heritage sites, another indicator of our, our rich history in this part of the world that did not start in 1994. Um, right. So all of these are related to Artsakh and they're all easy to get around, you know, to navigate. Yep. That's, that's yeah. fantastic. Yeah, again, so. it's just been so impressive and so important uh, to see all this. So thank you. Also. I have to thank you both, you know, yeah. for, for giving us this platform to talk about it. Thank you for your work. Arda, thank you for the work of the central board and the central office. I'm so proud of everybody and um, I'm proud to be a member myself. So uh, thank you for joining us tonight for staying up. Okay. Yeah. All right. Do, uh, we'll talk again. You know, as, yeah, for sure. Let's let, let's keep in touch. I mean, you know, the, the show is going to continue, you know, during during the war, uh, you know, David and Greg were broadcasting every night. Uh, and then when I joined, we, we began to whittle it down to three nights a week. Uh, and now we're one night night a week, which is which is which is yeah. re reasonable. Uh, but, you know, so we'd love to have you on the show again at some, some point. David has been, uh, you know, studiously working at putting together a uh, a couple of town halls. And what we'd like to do is you know, engage the community a little bit more, do some more back and forth. And I think your, if I can speak, you know, for yeah, us, sure, sure. your expertise would come in really, really handy. And Great. I'll, look forward, I'll look forward to it. So thank you. Yeah. Okay. Thank I'm going to so leave much. now. Have okay. A, have a great night. Thanks. Thank you so much. Okay. Take care. Bye-bye. All right. So uh, a lot yeah. of ground covered. Uh, we've got all the links uh, up. Thank you. David for doing that. Yeah, no, no problem. She, yeah, art is great. Uh, and yeah, I mean, her background is in, communications, uh, PR communications. Um, and so you can see just where she's coming from. And uh, I appreciate everybody that's tuning in and watching and, and taking a look at these sites. I encourage people to bookmark them, uh, to reference them. I've had them bookmarked for a long time. Uh, so you can always reference uh, things and there's resources on all those sites that we sent. And of course, to take a moment and uh, watch the episodes right. of Voices of Truth and share them uh, as are the mentioned uh which is the most important thing i think we could do is to share it yeah. for sure i think you know our voices are you know um it's great to have a voice but you have to have something to say when when you know when when you're trying to project your voice so yeah. uh, hopefully you know you'll take something from not only what, what we do but of course what agbu does yeah. uh and not only internalize it but you know help uh raise awareness with other people and get them to uh, you know, not only understand what our cause is, but to, you know, to activate and to go first, you know, we have the luxury in this kind of country uh, of having a bill of rights, which allows us to connect with our, you know, with our, um, you know, direct re representatives. And if we're not even paying attention to those people, um, it's, it's really hard to expect any change to happen. So, you're right. um, you're you know, right. yeah. I wish it was that easy to impact what's going on in Armenia. I'll tell you that. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Well, easy is the wrong word. Right. But we here have the privilege of being able to contact. You could contact Garamendi. Isn't he your rep? Or like or nearby? I've got a whole list uh, of them. Yeah. So uh, we can contact a representative here and make an impact. We can't contact representatives in Armenia. That's we right. can't contact. Well, I guess that's not true. We can, but it's not the same kind of interaction we can have right. with our representatives here. Uh, and we're seeing some very troubling things happening. It's it's been hard, man. Like right. we know we want to talk about so many things. And Rich, I want to give you a shout out right now. Okay. I know we're live. Thank you for everybody's tuning in. I hope you stick with us tonight. We're gonna to go over some very important news items. But there is more to cover. 
about what's going on in Armenia than bad news constantly. That is true. There is more. That you is brought true. it up. Greg brought it up. I've resisted it, saying, look, we, we have to focus on everything. The news, yes, the most important news items, sadly, have been really tragic things that keep happening. Right. But we have champion wrestlers. Right. We have champion chess play tournament. We have uh, Hollywood uh, artists uh, and, yeah. and filmmakers and so on. Right. And so we will get there. Yeah. We, we will get there. We will we get will. there. Uh, but it's just... It's, well, it's, and you know, for, for, for many of the people who have been watching uh, us yeah. and who have been watching this show, uh, you know, there's there's always a lot to cover. Right now, particularly, there's a lot of heavy news. It, and it's been this way for a while. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, the Armenian nation is more than a collection of, you know, tragedies that we're right. trying to string together some sort of hope. Um, but... We would be remiss if we didn't go through some of the some some of the news right. items. Uh, we still have Azeris who are in Armenian territory. Yes. Why don't, have... why don't we start with the, with that with, with the with the map? Okay. Can we do that. Sorry, Let's see that now. guys. We're, sure. we're adjusting on the fly. By the way, it's kind of it's, it, it's weird to be able to just be like, hey, Rich. What's hey, up, can man? you do that? Yeah. yeah. Uh, but we can start with what's been happening there. But yeah, Azeris are in the territory of Armenia, which is completely unacceptable. There's just it's it blows my mind that this is even happening right now, right? So, right, yes. So we're talking about this area over here, yeah, Seb Leach, Black Leach, which a Black Lake means Black Lake. Uh, this happened right before our episode last week. That's right. right. So, so a day or two before that, May eleven or twelve, Azari started to cross that border into the lake, uh -huh. and they started to occupy that lake. Um, and at first, we're talking about two hundred. Soldiers, 250 soldiers or so. And then they were also coming into the Gekhar Nuik region as well, which is in that northern part, a little bit, a little bit further, right around there, coming in towards Vardenis. So we can, can you zoom there in a little bit? Can you zoom in? Yeah. yeah. So they were coming in towards Vardenis there, which guys is extremely close to Lake Sevon. If you can't see, there's there's Lake Sevon. And then down by Black Lake, they were going in, approaching towards Goris. We're talking like three to three and a half kilometers, which I believe is what about a mile to two, what between uh, what almost two miles, I believe, right? Um, so, yeah, it's 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 very close. It's, no matter what, um, it 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 is a provocation, not unlike what happened last year, and it's a very similar setup. Um, you know, well, exactly. You said it's about one point eight six, almost two two miles, maybe a little more than two miles. They were coming in. They've advanced a little bit more, and guess what? Now apparently it's five to six hundred Azeri soldiers. Now there were reports that Azeri soldiers had agreed to leave and were some were somewhere leaving the lake. But wait a minute! Now all of a sudden, Pashinyan is saying that there's five to six hundred Azeri soldiers yeah. still in Armenian territory. They're intimidating our soldiers. They're firing shots in the air. Um, they're intimidating shepherds. Like it's just unacceptable. Right. And it's all under the guise of border demarcation and trying to. And the, and there's also reports of using uh, old, outdated, or uh, fabricated what is to look like Soviet era maps to say, well, this is what the border should be. That's what this says. Right. Um, in order to create the same sort of confusion and well, let's see, let's figure it out, um, which has led to um, this some startling new developments, which we'll get yeah. get to in a minute. But yeah. it, you know, we're let me let, let, let's show this border standoff here this yeah this exactly so here so coming from Oscar is they've been on it I mean, all these, it's all over the uh, Armenian media um you're not seeing much talked about it at all in Western media right but well because Western media only has time for one crisis and that's Israel Palestine. Ex exactly exactly which which we'll get to that in a, in, a, in a second in a little bit here but so last week it's been more than a week that this has been happening right so there were some, there were talks on may 16th some of the azeri forces apparently left and returned to their starting positions in azerbaijan at that point now we're in a situation where there's five to six hundred azeri soldiers and actually rewind a little bit over the weekend there was supposed to be negotiation right yeah. what happened with those negotiations of course they no showed a no show exactly much so, the same way that they didn't uh you know um adhere to any ceasefire or care about um you know exactly any negotiations yeah exactly uh following the at the war when there were supposedly ceasefires right 
until the November 9. Yeah, I wonder, I wonder if that could be a strategy that I could use in my life. If I could just set appointments, mm-hmm. not show up and get my way anyway. Yeah. How, how does that work? You know, where I do I sign up for that if, life? If you have, what is it? 10, 10 million, 10, 10 billion residents and a bunch of oil money, I guess so. Right. right? So look, they, like you said, this is provocation. This is complete provocation. So, what happens now, right? So, like, they open fire. This was this was today. This was in the last twenty four hours. They open fire. Oh, and then they apologize. So, what the heck? Okay. The the commander of the Azerbaijani forces contacted the commander of the Armenian unit, asking him to stop shooting, and said the shooting was an accident. The armed forces of the Republic of Armenia are warning that the recurrence of such incidents will be considered a deliberate attempt to begin confrontation. What are they? What are they? Well, I would imagine that just being on our land is a deliberate attempt. To, of course, you know, but, of course. You know, look. Thankfully, no fighting has started. But how is this going to look? CSTOs having meetings. The, well, you uh, know, and you know, listen. You're you're rarely going to hear me say you know positive things about Bashanian or the Minister of Defense or any of these people right. who have. You know, I don't know. It's questionable what they're, yeah. how they're, yeah, they're, yeah, what but they're doing. But I will say that I think it's good that cooler heads are prevailing right now because if if I understand the way this could have gone, which is the way it did last time, which is they incurred, you know, they 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 came into our territory, Fire. we fought them back, and then they say, "Oh, look, they're firing at us," and then they start a fight. Yeah. So so the fact that we didn't take the bait is kind of a good thing. But I think there's more at play, and the Absolutely. developments of the last like 18 hours are pretty telling because yeah. the reports coming out are now that um, that a deal is being crafted, and it already and, was and crafted. yeah, it already yeah. was crafted. It, yeah, it's leaked. Just to rewind a second, why are the negotiations at all over our sovereign border, the Armenians, Armenia's sovereign border? that was incurred and crossed by Azeri troops since now, since the war was lost, the Armenian border now directly borders Azerbaijan. There is no more Artsakh there preventing yeah. that. Um, but why a negotiation in the first place? This is wrong. U.S. has spoken up. Europe has spoken up. Russia has even said they need to leave, but yet they're staying planted. And right. now... We well, I'll, I'll, you know, this is this is some some something else to bring up on that on that that note. If you're Azerbaijan, and if you are so determined to say this is our land, this is our territory, and you've spent since 1994 pining over it, and you've spent since Stalin, you know, separated yeah. it out since the 20s, you'd think that with all this time, you'd know where the line was. And now suddenly they don't know where the line is. Of no, the, uh, no, no, no. Right? Great it's just, it's We've been talking for a while, right? They're going to keep. Yeah, that's going. right. They're going to keep trying to take what they can get. They're going to sure. take what they can get. They got our stock, 80% of what we had, right? Now they have, they're right on up on our border. They're going to try to take more. They're going to try to force. They literally, they're so transparent. They said, if you will not build this, this transit, if you will not allow this, we will force it. We're going to take it anyway. What it, this seems like, and look on that, like we showed the map, a northern part and a more southern part, they're trying to invade. Well, right? the problem is this, David, and the problem is that is that the the world is paying attention to Israel and Palestine. Right, of course. And I'm not I'm not suggesting that they shouldn't. But what I am suggesting is, is that people don't have a whole lot of bandwidth for more than one or two crises at a time. Yeah. And these people, and when I say these people, I mean the Turks and the Zeris, they know that. They That's know, why they, they did know. this, the timing. They knew when Trump was going to be, you know, real, you know, in the election fight. He, they, they knew that COVID was happening. This was, you know, yeah. and, 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 and the other part of it is they took American tax dollars yeah. under the auspices of fighting against Iran, and then they or, bought a bunch of weapons. terrorism or whatever, right, right. yeah. So, yeah. so and, and here's the other part of it, and this is the sad, sad, sad truth of it, is that I've just come to realize that Armenian lives don't matter the same way other lives do. Uh, and I wish it, and yeah. to more than just Armenians, I don't know. 
Yeah, I mean, again, it's the geopolitics of the region, right? right. The, Armenia has no, no other nation has any material interest in Armenia at all. Right. So while Macron, Macron, let's say his name right, right? Carl says, comes out saying that France will be there and support Armenia, say, if Azerbaijan starts anything, right? They even said militarily. Tick tock. If it happens, great, because we don't, we don't, we cannot necessarily count on Putin right now and right. Russia right now. CSTO is meeting, Putin is saying, okay, resolve this diplomatically. But when it comes down to it, we really don't know what deals have been made. That's right. What I have a very reputable contact that's even said to me. So we've had, a, I'm a, I, no, it's okay. I'm not going to reveal any names or anything. They shared to me saying that we don't know what commitments Russia has made to Turkey. Does that mean they've made commitments that more can be conceded? That more can happen? That a war can actually happen? That, you know, like, so we don't know, yeah. and we're going to get to that. And we moment. also, yeah. we also don't, here's the other part of it that, and I think for the people who are either watching live or mm. recorded later, yeah. uh, you guys know that it doesn't, the part of this that gives us such a sense of unease is not just the lack of clarity. It's not just the lack of information in order to figure out what could be clear. It is the idea that no matter what arrangement or you know anything that is made or agreed upon, that they're going to do what they want anyway. And so this feels like, at least to me, it feels like a repeat of what happened in the fall. You know, you know, we're going to say we're going to do training exercises. We don't know whether that's going to be bluster or not, or whether we're really going to push the envelope and get into your territory. But then all of a sudden, we're going to send a little posse in to go yeah. check out this this yeah. border. And then we're going to say, oh, well, we need to figure this out while we just occupy land. I mean, can you imagine if we if we marched, in, if if California marched into Baja, California, said, well, we just got to figure out yeah. where the border is here. Really? Yeah. Like, you didn't know? Yeah. yeah. It's, Whatever. I, I, it's, yeah. And so, look, you were starting to touch on it. I, I derailed this a little bit. But okay. some disturbing news came out today, right, of yet another agreement. That Pashinyan has already almost preliminary agreed to. Just about. It was leaked. But he said he's going to sign it. Yes. He said in Parliament he's going to sign it. And if he's, he's making a precondition on that. That the document... Okay, hold on a second. So there's a couple things going on here. The document was leaked. This was not public knowledge. It was leaked by... Serge Sarkisian, Serge Sarkisian, the former president of Armenia, former son-in-law, mm -hmm. who is an is opposed is anti pashinyan leaks this document. Okay, Pashinyan was forced to confirm yet another deal with Azerbaijan that has been kept under wraps. Okay, this is according to Aspares. Until an op opposition news site published the contents of, of the leaked document. All right, so. What is this document? When I'm hearing this news, I'm I'm my my stomach's churning. I'm like, my God, what now? Yeah. Has he already signed away territories of Armenia and Sunik? What is going on? There's a whole lot of weird. So there are stuff there are six in points in this, yes. and we can either unpack this or you know uh, I, leave that for the for our folks for the. Why don't we unpack it okay. a little bit? I and will then, try and yeah. go through at least the first three sure. really quickly. Number sure. one says the government, and I'm just going to highlight it just to make yeah. it a little easier. Just to give everybody a little bit quick overview. It has to do with the demarcation of borders. This document has to do with that and establishing a commission yeah. for that purpose. So what this says is that the governments of, of Azerbaijan and Armenia shall establish delegations within the framework of, the com of this commission uh, by May 31st. Then the, then the government of Russia will establish a, de uh, a delegation at the same timeline, and they'll be doing consultative work uh, to sort of negotiate between both parties. Number three says, the delegations will be headed by official representatives, which are appointed according to the laws of Azerbaijan, Armenia, and Russia. So this is an important thing to unpack really quick, quickly. What this says is, whatever law structure is going on in Azerbaijan, they're gonna pick the people who are going to come to this delegation. Same goes with Armenia and Russia. And we both know, we all know, that right now there's a whole lot of turmoil in the political structure in Armenia. In Armenia. In Armenia. So who knows who's going to be on this delegation, right? right? right. And, and also, 
we know for we we know right now, Azerbaijan and and even Russia is questionable, but they're not going to have Armenia's best interest in mind, correct? Right. So no. number four, the yeah. commission will hold its first session at the end of June, June thirtieth, as a result of which the main directions and the sequence of work will be formed, as well as the composition of the expert groups to be approved. In other words, yeah. they're gonna they're the, first they have to get people together you know, appointed by the government to go talk. And then they're going to talk about how they're going to talk, right? <laughs> That's essentially what it is, yeah, right? Yeah. Okay, now we're going to figure out how, 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 how we're going to do this. We need a no. lawyer to... Right. to, to I mean, this is, this is as good as it can get yeah. ad hoc like this. Yeah. The expert groups will present a series of tasks within a month after the first session of the commission. I'm not sure exactly what so that means. Would that be July 31 then? Or by July 31, a month after? Is that what that means? Because the first session is June 30. Expert groups will present a series of tasks. And what does that mean, series of tasks? We have yet to find out. Uh, sorry, go ahead. All yeah. issues, uh, the expert, yeah. Number six, all issues related to the safe implementation of the declaration and the work of the commission should be addressed only through diplomatic and political means based on a <sighs> tripartite yeah. agreement. So look, we know how that went, like you said a moment ago, we know how well those Diplomatic political means went during the war when it was what two or three times there was supposed to be a ceasefire and they didn't listen, right? So, look, this is basically roping. I'm gonna unshare this. Yeah, sure, sure. You know, this yeah. is basically roping us into well, a negotiation about our own borders because they want a they want uh, they want a highway. They want to take well the highway and also they're going to take as much as they can get, right? If they can get more if they can get some more of our land, they will. And they're probably and they're not going to adhere to this anyway. Right. So look, Pashinyan says our position remains that our Azerbaijani troops must leave Armenian territory without preconditions. He's been saying that, okay? Uh he, but he all he confirmed that Yerevan will agree to the creation of the demarcation commission only if Baku withdraws its forces from the Armenian side of the border. Here's my question: What if they don't? This agreement's there still. So what if they don't leave and we don't sign this agreement? There's a lot of what ifs, man. No, but and okay. a, I know. I, but does and, that mean it's war now? I, I yeah, <laughs> because I think we all know that that's. That's a very likely scenario. so. And, and look, we all know that Aliyev, I'm seeing stuff on Telegram. Maybe we can unpack it another time. Telegram, the app, guys, sorry, the Telegram app. I follow a number of Russian, there are Armenian sources, it's all in Russian. They're on the ground there, uh, or they're in Russia, they're, but they're, they're all right. they're sources from there. And this is deeply concerning stuff. Just in a nutshell, what it appears is Aliyev, president of Azerbaijan, is trying to squeeze out as much as he can get from Pashinyan in the event Pashinyan does not win re-election June 20. Squeeze out as much as he possibly can. And here we go. This this document is leaked. Right. Um, May 31 is before June 20. Right. June 30 is not, but May 31 is. So can he force Pashinyan to put all of whoever his cronies are on this commission? We don't know. The other thing is, it appears to me, and I have confirmation from people that are much more in the know, right? It appears that Putin is not helping more than he could be, right? Because Pashinyan is still in power. Okay. Well, I mean, can you blame him? I mean, well, Pashinyan well, got there by 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 basically giving exactly, the finger to exactly, and to, you know. still trying to move west. Look, guys. Yes, and I've had to explain this to family members of mine who don't understand it. Yes. We want Armenia to be to have a democracy. We want it to democratize. We want it to thrive and flourish and have freedoms, right? The sad, very tragic reality is our neighborhood is very evil and very treacherous, including Russia. And unless we are lockstep with Russia, Greg has said it, and the past presidents of Armenia, as corrupt as they've been and they are, they were lockstep with Putin. And we never lost land, and our borders were never threatened like this. That's right. Yet, right now, we're seeing that. So what is more important? Here's the thing. Look, we don't live there. And I feel so bad saying this because everyone there was saying they felt freedom. They felt this. Maybe they, didn't, maybe they didn't have to bribe to get a job. 
Maybe they didn't have to pay to go vote. Maybe they didn't have to get paid to go vote for somebody. That's literally the stuff that was happening. That was literally the stuff that was happening. I don't know if that's been fixed since Pashinyan's taken power. I don't know. I don't live there. But there was optimism. But all of that changed September 27th. All of that. He effed up on COVID too, right? But look, no one's perfect. Our own president right now, we're pissed off at. You freaking recognize the genocide. I wanted to mention it when Otto was on, but we didn't have time. You recognize the genocide, yes, but then you go ahead and you freaking you give wave, $100 million. You're, you're going to give $100 million again, or you're going to at least make it possible for, by waiving Section 907 of the Human Support Act to make it possible to give another $100 million to Azerbaijan. I'm sorry I'm getting animated and, and, and upset right now, but look, these are the realities yeah. of our region. True. These are the realities of the situation we're in. We need somebody that is going to be locked up with Putin to ensure our borders, ensure the safety and security of the people. Look, here's yeah. here's here's the bottom line. It doesn't matter whether it's Putin or whether, whether it's China, or it doesn't matter. I, I honestly don't care. You know what I care about? I care about the survival of this nation. And, and unless Armenia, and I said this in the last show, unless Armenia can find a way to arm itself to the teeth and take care of its borders without worrying about anybody else and can do so, you know, assertively, uh, then we're going to need to be playing ball with the people who can do that. And right now, that's Russia. I mean, I think it's great that Macron said he would send people in. He's not yeah. going to. I think it's uh, great Iran said that, too, Iran. that Iran said hey, the, the border has, has to stay the way. Yeah. So the, the, the flip side of Iran saying that the border has to stay the way it is, is that now, and let's, let's for a moment just entertain this. I want to sure. go back to the map real quick. Sure. So give us a second. Um, you know, I, I, you know, going back to the map, if we look at the board, Armenia's border with Iran. Yeah. Yeah. Small little stretch. Small little there. stretch here. If Iran says, no, we don't want, we don't want a new neighbor or the elimination of a neighbor. If they're hard fast on that, that gives Azerbaijan enough to say, well, then the border, then we have to have it crossed here. If you can't do it here, yeah. we got to do it here. Well, and so, you know, w I mean, I think it's great that Iran is sort of stepping up a little bit, but under yeah. what context are they stepping up? Does that mean that they're helping us or are they actually hurting us yeah. by by suggesting that it has to be somewhere else other than here? Well, I mean, I think what, you know what it's mean? looking like by, by Azeri's actions, right? Coming in at Sevlich, Black Lake, and then up in the, the right. more northern part of Gekhan Nui, it looks like they're flanking both sides of that direct middle route, right? Uh -huh. That middle route would go would be the shortest path between Azerbaijan and the right smack dab, the middle. Well, Mahichi. because they already have a road here. Exactly, right? So it makes sense that it looks like they're going to try to force that and just choke our nation and force that. Let's hope that doesn't happen, but there is... Well, it would actually be this. What they would want to do is take this whole thing. I mean, yeah. it, the infrastructure is already there. Maybe. I mean, they're not. Yeah, they'd have to build a new road right through the middle part. But it looks like the we don't know. But the middle part looks like it's the, it is the shortest path. It looks like it, but we don't know. And, and, and let's just also reframe this for a second. Yeah. They're trying to connect two pieces of land that weren't theirs in the first place. Exactly, they've always been ours. They, not, they like when we were prepping, Nahi Chabad included was ours. Right. Our saw always ours. So look, but look, there, you guys. What everyone needs to know right now is the threat of renewed of not renewed. The threat of a new war right. is very real, very, very real. Right. And we have some very clear indication from our own State Department, right? right? right. Shall we touch on that, Rich? Sure. Like sure. concerning this above everything concerns me more now that we've, we've seen what this document is. I don't like it, but I'm, I'm alarmed and very concerned by the timing right now of these guys, what are they? Travel advisories from multiple nations, Western nations, on traveling to Armenia and to Artsakh, excuse me, to Armenia and to Azerbaijan. I'm not going to mention Artsakh, of course, but you guys. Because the Gorno Karabakh, that, that doesn't exist anymore. Right. Well, yes. I mean, the 80% of it we don't have. Well, anymore. no, no. I mean, yeah. even on the map, you don't see it. Right. What you see is it's all Azerbaijan. Right, right. But look, guys. Thanks, here's, Google. Yeah, here's the thing. Um, this was just in the past three days. The U.S., 
UK and Canada issue travel warnings. I just learned about Canada tonight from Zartan. Um, U.S. Embassy in Armenia, U.S. Embassy in Baku, I'll get to that in a second, U.K. Foreign Service, whatever it's called, in Canada. But even the, what's concerning even more, the U.S. Embassy in Baku even said, U.S. residents, Armenian, American citizens, do not travel to ours anywhere outside of Baku. If you're going to Azerbaijan, don't go anywhere outside of Baku. U.S. Embassy, that's the U.S. Embassy in Baku. U.S. Embassy in Armenia saying do not travel to Armenia. Stay away from the borders. Do not, and, um, and then the U.K. and Canada releasing similar things. And why this is a red flag for most yes. of us, just to sort of yeah, level set that, yeah. is because we saw the same thing prior to every provocation, prior to, to yes. the war. Back same sort of thing. Last July, 2020, right, uh, travel warnings to Armenia's eastern border. The attack in Tabush, um, northern region of Armenia, northeastern region right. of Armenia, uh, province of Armenia. Then, right before the war in Artsakh, right. right in September, days before, State Department alert: Do not travel to Armenia. What do they know? So again, we have a track record in place. We have the data in place that's saying every time these travel alerts advisories are released, it's days okay. before some sort of attack or something right. so with the zaries on armenian soil military training there are fifteen thousand troops in uh in azerbaijan having training 300 armed armored vehicles in their training yeah are we days away from an now an attack on armenia uh, you know uh... and six months less than barely six months since the war in Arsaw. right you know, yeah, it's, it's it's extremely concerning. And I, Greek City Times, man, called it. I feel. Like. I hope they didn't. But... Well, I, yeah, I know, I know. It's 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 yeah. I Everybody... even though we're at a news we're in a news show, I'm at a loss for words about it because it is it's so heartbreaking. It's so concerning. We ever we need to be aware. We have to try to keep our resolve. We have to make sure others are aware. That's why, again, you know, our episode was so important on how people can take action. Share about it. Share trusted sources and articles. Uh, you could share the articles we post. Share right. them, like, and and just say why it's important to you and why people should care. And we have to keep it going. Right. You know? uh, yeah. Well, we're gonna we're winding down yeah. to the end of this episode. Um, there's a couple more things to to note. Yes. Um, I know that there has been you know renewed violence in. Um, Gaza I'm going to say, yeah, in, in Palestine, Palestine and, yeah. and, and Israel, because, you know, not everybody is using the, the correct word of Palestine. Right. But, um, you know, uh, and, and, and we, we, we pray for safety. And yes. I, I know that's a very overused uh, statement, but, you know, for those of us who do pray, it's, it's important to do it. Um, in the middle of all this, yeah. an Armenian priest was injured in an attack in Jerusalem. Yeah. Uh, a bunch of uh, Jewish youth, uh, you know, were the ones that did it. Um, yeah. You know, and you know, I, I don't really know the entire context of it, um, but it is troubling. Yeah. It's you know? very troubling. It seems like it's just you know their nationalistic uh, agitation. You know, like I, I, I don't. I, I didn't get the sense when you know, I was there, uh, September 2020, September, September 2019, excuse me, uh, in, in say, Jerusalem, in the Armenian Quarter. And it was amazing to be there, to meet the patriarch there, to meet some of the clergy there, and see the St. James Cathedral. Uh, this was a priest that was at St. James Cathedral, and they have a convent there with for the, the uh, clergy that are studying uh, to become clergy, uh, ordained clergy. And... Uh, it's it's very disturbing to hear about that that but the relations between armenians and uh israelis and palestinians i i don't think we none of us got the sense that there was any real any kind of conflict per se uh between them or any discourse yeah. but uh, you just see this byproduct of the aggression yeah i see yeah. right um uh and then you know you know a couple last things uh you know the you know, we still have POWs. We still have, you know, um, yeah. far too many who have yet to more, more than two hundred, and it's now what six months since since this war. Wow. 
right? Yeah. Are we six months now? We are. So, uh, wait, yeah, it's, it's been a long time. It's been more than six months. It's been more than six months since the war. Well, since the end of the war. Well, so since November, so. Yeah, yeah. so, you look, I want to thank the European Parliament, well, over 600 members of their parliament voted in favor for the immediate res resolution of the Armenian POWs being released, immediate. We have a POW resolution here in Congress, and I'm going to give an update right now to the minute of, of uh, what it is, HRES 240, live TV, guys. Thanks for tuning in, or if you're listening later, 54 co-sponsors. We have 54 co-sponsors out of 435 members of our parliament, U.S. House of Representatives. Yeah. And thank you, Europe, for showing true solidarity with 607. So I find that really in interesting, you know, uh, and David, I think you have a little bit more intel on this, so let's, but let's talk about it briefly. What's that? Um, the GOP has historically been the party of the military. Like, we are so pro-military. We're yeah. so POW. We want to take care of everybody. We take care of our own, which, by the way, they don't because they don't fund the, you know, the, right. the VA hospitals and everything right. else. Uh, but, but I find it interesting that the the party that suggests that it is so pro military and pro taking care of people who fight in wars yeah. are not signing on to this bill because of Adam Schiff. Yeah, I mean, again, this is inside information. We can share it. We might as well. Let's put it out there. I'm not going to say who shared this information with me, but you know, I asked uh, just try to try to get more insight as to why the POW resolution out of all the resolutions. Right out of all of them, you don't want to sign on to the Artsakh's right. right to self -determ uh, self determination. Okay, you don't want if you're on the Azeri caucus, which is not many, by the way, and you don't want to sign on denouncing Azerbaijan, right? Like, okay, but these are two hundred men, women, elderly that are being held captive yeah. for six months. I, I hate to tell you, but I don't think they're being held captive. But you know. That's just my morbid thought process on this. I don't think they're being held captive. What do you mean? I think they're dead. I hope not, man. I mean, we know that some have been murdered. We know that, that we know that some have been able to communicate with their families because the ICRC, International Red Cross, has been able to. But we don't know the exact status of all of them, right? We don't, or what how they're being treated for sure. But the the cruelty is the point, and the and these yes. these the people that we are dealing with. It, are are hell bent on being cruel yes and that's and there's no other you're absolutely right and intimidating and humiliating the armenian people the dehumanizing us but yes to the point you brought up it's very concerning why i'm trying to understand and i asked right. why such why the pow resolution out of all the resolutions which should be an international human rights crisis right has so few co-sponsors and it's because, sadly, politics within our own Congress, the person who wrote it, who sponsored it, is um, one of our staunch allies. Is one of our staunch allies. Um, the the members of the Republican Party um, do not; they can't stand him. They can't stand so Adam Schiff. That that's uh, that's that's a reality, and so we have to deal with that reality. But look, it has inched up a little bit, and apparently, a co-chair of one of the He's on a foreign, a foreign relations committee. Apparently, uh, did sign on, which is a big deal because um, you know they're supposed to be more neutral, quote unquote, right. on a on a committee like that. But he signed on, right. so uh, that to me says that there could be more life right. to it. Well, so, I hope so. Yeah. You know, I, I, yeah. I, you know, this pendulum swing between having hope and being crushed and having hope and being crushed that you know it it yeah. it forges you into. Yeah. Something that you didn't want to be, at least it has for me. And yeah. so, you know, but what we quickly to, you know, some way that you can help, uh, help push the issue and you can help, yes. um, you know, with getting your U.S. representatives to co-sign this letter yeah. um, to, to this, to, to security Blinken, uh, to the, to our secretary Blinken yeah. in order to, you know, help get some change and to get these POWs released. Um, I've already put it in the link. 
yeah. in our link area here. So um, yeah, this one here was actually, uh, and I, I think it may have ended today, but it's mm -hmm. okay. Send it, send it. It's okay. Uh, but there's it, send all of these until they take them down from the site. This one has to do with the Armenian Caucus leadership. It was uh, led by David Valadeo, mm -hmm. uh, a strong, very strong ally. I believe he's from the Central Central Valley. Um, it was, which is the letter, they wanted as many signatures as possible from members of Congress on this letter uh, that they're sending to the State Department, Blinken, and so on, calling for the U.S. to stop all arms, uh, U.S. arms aid to Azerbaijan, all arms supply and aid to Azerbaijan right now, stopping it right now. Um, so, yeah, David Valdeo, he led this drive to freeze existing U.S. military assistance to Azerbaijan and block any future aid that contrib contributes directly to or indirectly to Azerbaijan's military operations, activities, or capabilities. So I commend the caucus, grateful for the caucus for doing this after Biden recognizes the genocide and then waves Section 907. Thank you to the Armenian caucus for sending this. Make sure your representative knows about it and signs on to it. And uh, we have other things, of course. Uh, we need to talk about so we've we yeah. we we have put up all the links yes. that you that you'll need to know and on top of that yeah. i've also put up our link tree which has the yeah. master link to everything mm -hmm. um and you'll be able to get more acclimated to doing advocacy work exactly. um it is not enough for the two and usually three of us to be up here doing everything that we can to you know present to you um, we need your help too Yes. So for those of you who are still watching, really, really thank you. For those of you who are watching after the fact, we're, we thank you. Too. Yes, thank you so much. Um, yeah, share it, like it, comment. Thank you, guys. We appreciate the support. Take action. You could take action. It takes a matter of just a couple minutes, a couple clicks um, by, by taking action with these links we provided. And actually, the Voices of Truth link is up on our link tree as well right now. Um, and actually, you know, Rich, before we sign off, um, I do want to uh, plug the, some, uh, this Sunday's event one last time okay. while we're on air. Uh, here. And also, see. while David's pulling that up, I, yeah. I'm going to put in our, um, in our comments here the link to our YouTube site um, where you'll be able to see these. And yeah. we're, we will soon be pivoting to a, a format where we're going to be able to broadcast simultaneously on a few different platforms. Um, yeah. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in the coming weeks as we're getting as we get closer to rolling that out. Great, I, I just plugged it on there under the uh, action items. Uh, so, guys, I happen to be emceeing Sunday's event. You know, last week we had uh, Armin, Dr. Armin Der Karigian on from the Bay Area Arsoc Task Force. And by the way, guys, this is not just the Bay Area. We're in Sacramento. This is it's virtual. It's online. Anybody, anywhere, if you're awake in your time zone can participate in this virtual event. The flyer is going to be right there. Uh, this is actually the link to register. Um, uh, I apologize, the flyer, no Rich, is actually on our Facebook page, uh, if you're able to pull that up uh, without too much trouble. Uh, thank you, guys. We're live here. Uh, but the, so you guys can see the visual of the flyer with the grand prize. There is a literal grand prize of four nights. Um, for four people at a luxury condo in Palm Springs that is gonna be just given away at this event, okay? So to have the chance to See win that, that I don't know anybody with some backstage passes. Yeah, like so like, you know, it, it's actually available to win, but it's tomorrow, it's, it's sorry, it's Sunday, it's four hour soldiers. Um, the, it's a virtual gala and auction raising money for the Insurance Foundation for Servicemen which provides compensation for families of fallen and injured soldiers. So um, the, it's non-governmental. Um, and so you, all the money is going directly to these families. This is providing a way of life for them. The, many of these families have lost their major breadwinner. Parents have lost a son. Yeah. Spouses uh, lost a husband. Wives have lost a husband. Uh, you just, yeah, scroll down. It's, Sorry. Uh, okay. No, no, no it's further down. Sorry. It's um they just go on the, go on our page on our page. Or it's photos. Uh, there it is. Public photos. Yep. Boom. There it is. Perfect, guys. Hopefully you guys can see this in just a moment. This is the flyer. It's a great flyer. 
Um, and this is the event. You guys can register. The link is gonna, is on our link tree. It's going to be in the, the comment section in just a moment. Uh, it's free to register, but it is raising money. And so we encourage people to bid on auction items, to bid on the silent auction. I gave my Warrior tickets for one game for next season, and they're playing really well. They're going to be great next next year. Um, and I got to bring you to a game, man. You're, All right. You're going to come with me, man. Yeah, for you sure. Gotta, I'd you gotta love it. You got to come down to the Bay, but I'd love it. But, uh, I'll wear my Yankee gear. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Whatever. Uh, I'll let you even wear Yankee gear to an A's game if you want, man. It's oh, okay. It's the same. I, I uh, always do. It's the, it's the same <laughs> league. It's okay. Uh, but it's so important that this is being done. The RCI test, we just put it together. And uh, we have a goal of raising $50,000 on there should be no reason on Sunday. And, um, hey, you, you know, know, we make light of this stuff sometimes because so much of Armenian life is so heavy. Yeah. So much of Armenian life is trying to raise awareness. So much of what we do, the three of us, uh, with David and, uh, and Greg and I, is all about, uh, you know, trying to contribute to the nation. So every once in a while, we're going to break and have a little joke in there because it's the only thing that keeps us from, you know, walking into traffic. So, you know, I'm going to, I'm yeah. just going to do what I can to, to yeah. be, you know, uh as light as i can on some of this stuff i yeah. you know i think it's a great cause um so if you can do do what you can yeah do. register for free and join and contribute what you can i mean there's going to be ways anybody can contribute even as low as 25 dollars. Right. there's gonna be opportunities for people to do that i'm emceeing it's an honor to do it for this community and for and for a wider community yep. and for the cause it starts it's at 6 45 p.m pacific time on sunday the link is there to register, yeah. and we hope to see you there. I'll put the link for the silent auction, too. It's on our link tree. That's fantastic. Yeah. All right, so uh, with you. that, uh, we're yeah. just going to sign off, and we'll just let you know next week, same time, 9 p.m., um, we will we release. Greg back. I think yeah, we get Greg back. I think we, I think we get him back. Hopefully. Unless he stays in L.A., but if he stays, right. he can still join us on Zoom. He still join us on Zoom. I'll just have to send him yeah. his wine. Yeah. All. <laughs> all right. But thank you, guys. Thanks, everyone. Take yeah. care.